kitchen. Today we are going to have um, three different casseroles. Make ahead casseroles that you can make the night before so that you're not in a rush the day, the morning. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to do all three of them so that you can make them ahead the night before and then you wake up the next morning, you just preheat your oven, you can put them in, you can have them for holidays, you can have them like um, church mornings, you can go to church, come home, have them for the brunch, you can have them for when you have company and you don't want to stay in the kitchen all day that morning, you can fix them the night before, wake up visit with your company, pop them in the oven, 30 minutes, you have a brunch, you have something to eat, you have breakfast. So really easy, simple, three meals. So let's get started. Okay, our first casserole we are having is called chicken and waffle casserole. And it says to preheat your oven at 350, which I did. And it says to take eight frozen waffles and put them in your toaster and toast them. So I'm working on that. And while they're toasting, it says to take a half a bag, which is 12 ounces of popcorn chicken and cut it into one inch pieces. Well, I don't eat the bag popcorn chicken. So I took two chicken breasts and I cut them into strips and I fried them. I battered them and I fried them. And I have them on my cutting board and I am cutting them into smaller pieces because I'm not, I just don't wanna eat that processed chicken. So you're welcome to eat the frozen um, popcorn chicken if you would like, that's entirely up to you, but I just chose not to, so. I fried us up some real chicken breast and I just battered them and fried them in some cooking oil, seasoned them with a little bit of um, garlic salt, onion salt or onion powder and celery salt. And I just kind of diced them up into bite-sized pieces. So I'm going to put that to the side. Okay. now. Our waffles are ready. So now I have took our waffles and I have cut them into bite-sized pieces in the bottom of our baking pan, which y'all know I use these throwaway pans. It's less mess. So it says to put your waffles in the bottom of your pan and then you add your chicken to the top of your waffles, spreading it out all over them. So that's what we're gonna do next. Spread our chicken out all over our waffles. Just like that. Okay, all right. Just like that, all right. So we did that. Okay, and in this bowl right here, I have six eggs in here and I have took a fork and I've whisked the six eggs. And to this six eggs, it says to add three fourths cup of whole milk. So I have three fourths cup of whole milk and I'm gonna add it to my eggs. Okay. And then it says to add a fourth of a cup of maple syrup. So I have a fourth of a cup of maple syrup and I'm gonna add it to my egg and my milk mixture. I can't even talk today. I don't know what is wrong with me. So I'm gonna add this in here. Okay, I'm gonna whisk that together. All right. And it says to take this and just pour it all over the chicken and the waffle pieces to get them all good and coated. That's simple enough. Get you all in here so y'all can see what we're doing. And we're just gonna pour it all over everybody. Getting all 
all of that in there, making sure that everybody's got some of that mixture on, just like that. And it says to bake at 350 for 50 minutes or until the eggs are set and the top of it is golden brown. Golden brown. So I'm gonna put this in my oven and I'll bring y'all back when it is set and ready. Okay, while we're waiting on our um, chicken and waffle casserole, we're gonna start on our cinnamon roll monkey bread bake to uh, cook. So we're gonna get started with it. What it says is to preheat your oven to 350, which it is, and it says in a large zip top bag, mix your cinnamon and your granulated sugar together. So that's what we're gonna do. In here, I have a half a cup of white sugar and one teaspoon of ground cinnamon. We're gonna mix those together. Get all that out of there. Okay, now it says to take your cinnamon rolls out of your package and it says to take two Pillsbury Grand cinnamon roll cans and cut your cinnamon rolls in fourths, just like this. Half, half again, and you should get four pieces. You take all of these pieces, you put them in this bag of cinnamon and sugar and you coat them and I have all mine cut on this plate right here. I went ahead and pre-cut them so you wouldn't have to sit here and watch me cut all of these cinnamon rolls. So we're gonna get them all in our bag here. Mm -mm. I'm losing them. They're Flying off over here. Come here. Can't go anywhere. Right. Let's make sure we close this because we do not want to make a mess across this kitchen. And once you have them all good and coated in the cinnamon and the sugar mixture, you're supposed to arrange them in the bottom of a baking dish that you sprayed with cooking spray. So we have our dish here. And we're just gonna start putting all these in the bottom of our pan. And some of them come apart, so that's perfectly okay. And I'll have all these recipes down in the description box for you so you can make these recipes. But I like the fact that you can make them the night before and stick them in the refrigerator and just pop them in the oven the next morning so that you're not rushing half asleep trying to get, you know, breakfast or brunch ready. Okay. All right. Let me wash my hands. Okay. And now it says this over out of our way. This is to stir, to stir together 
a fourth a cup of melted butter, two tablespoons of maple syrup, which we have right here. I didn't have my bowl ready, so y'all heard me fumbling around over there trying to get a bowl ready, I'm sorry. I should explain to y'all what y'all are hearing. And a fourth a cup of brown sugar. We're supposed to mix all this together. This is gonna make our popping to pour over our cinnamon rolls. And then it says just to take and mix this over, mix this up really good and pour it over the um, cinnamon rolls evenly as you can. Put these over here. Let's see, just kind of pour. Get them a little bit everywhere we can. And then we're gonna bake this for 25 to 30 minutes or until everything is good and bubbly. And I'll bring y'all back when this is good and bubbly. Our third casserole is a biscuit and gravy breakfast casserole. And to get started on it, I need to um, brown this roll of breakfast sausage so I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I will bring y'all back once it's browned and we'll go from there. The recipe also said while you're browning and salting, to throw in um, two tablespoons of butter and one medium diced white onion. I didn't have a white onion so I just diced it what of the green onions that I had. So we're gonna throw that in there. And it'll work out just fine. And we're just gonna let these um, cook together and I will bring y'all back when the sausage is completely brown because we're gonna make um, gravy in this pan. We're going to take our sausage out once it's brown and we're going to make gravy. So I'll bring y'all back when the sausage is brown and we're ready to make our gravy. Okay guys, so our sausage is done. We didn't have a lot, a lot of oil left. So I've added a little bit of butter, not quite. And it was probably about a half of a tablespoon in here because we're going to use this to make our gravy. So I've got my butter in here and I've got it um, melting. And I've got a fourth of a cup of flour I'm gonna put in here. And we're just gonna let this flour cook a little bit. We wanna cook off the flour taste. We don't really wanna brown it very much, but we're gonna cook this raw flour taste off. stir it around a little bit. I'm getting all these onions off the side of the pan that stayed in there because I want those in there. And you can use the gravy packet by all means if you want, but I prefer just to make my gravy like this. All right, that should be good. And in my measuring cup here, I have two cups of milk. I may not use it all. I just keep adding it until and stirring until I get the consistency of the gravy that I want, the thickness. Just keep whisking it around. I probably need to, let me turn my heat back up because I had turned it down earlier. Just keep whisking. And it'll keep thickening and you'll keep getting those lumps out of there and all that goodness off the bottom of the pan. 
and keep adding. And it'll keep thickening. It smells amazing in here. And I usually do this for about a minute to, to two. I think that's plenty of milk. All right, and I'm gonna let this sit here and just simmer a minute. And I'm gonna get some salt and pepper and add it into it. And if for some reason it thickens up too much and I wanna thin it out, I'll just add a little bit more milk to it. Put some salt in there. I think I am gonna add a little bit, just a tiny bit. Maybe I'll load it. Yep, that's what I want right there. Look how rich and creamy that looks. That's perfect. I'm gonna let this simmer just a minute and I'll bring y'all back in just a few minutes when it simmers. Okay, now that our gravy's done, we're going to um, assemble this um, sausage biscuit and gravy. It's called biscuit and gravy breakfast casserole. So what do you do? You take a can of Grand's biscuits, the eight count, and you cut them in, it said bite-sized pieces. So this is how I cut them. I just cut them just like this and I arranged them, I sprayed my pan and I put them in the bottom of my pan. And that's what it said to do. So this is what I did. This is how it come out, just like that. And then it says to take your sausage and onion mixture and pour it over your biscuits. So that's what we're gonna do. Just kind of pour it over. All right, we're gonna take this spoon and kind of spread that around, just like that. Make sure we got some everywhere. Okay, and it says to whisk together five eggs we got five eggs right here in this bowl and it says to put in um let's see a half a cup of whole milk one teaspoon of oregano so that's what we're gonna do a half a cup of whole milk and one teaspoon of oregano And it says to whisk this together. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Something, pepper or something's got in my nose out of that gravy, I think. So we're gonna whisk this together. Okay. And it says to pour this over the top of the sausage. So we're gonna do that. 
and release just like this over the top of our sausage and our biscuits. Okay, and then it says to take two cups of shredded cheese, any kind of cheese, and I have shredded Colby Jack here. Y'all know that's my favorite. So we're gonna take it and we're gonna spread it next. And you can use any cheese of your choice, whatever you like, pepper jack, cheddar, whatever. All right, we're gonna spread this over, okay? All right, put that on there. And then it says to take that gravy that you made. Let me move this out of my way. It says to take that gravy that you made and pour it over all over the, the top of all of it. So we're gonna take this gravy. And we're just gonna kind of spoon it out. I told y'all that stuff was gonna thicken it up real good, and it did, and it's good too. I could just sit there and eat the gravy by itself with the biscuits. Kinda of see if we can. And just spread this out over the top of it. And then it says to cook this in a 350 degree oven for, well, let me turn it over on the back. I think the time might be on the back. Yes, for 30, 30 to 40 minutes. And then it says to serve it warm. And that's it. I can't wait to try this. I've never thought about putting the eggs and the cheese and everything in the, you know, in there together. So I'm kind of excited about this one. I want to try this one. So I'm gonna get this in the oven, get it done. And when it's done, I'll bring y'all back. Okay guys, we've got all three of our casseroles done here and we're gonna give these a taste. I guess we're gonna start with the chicken and waffle. I did put a little bit more um, maple syrup on top just to taste. Mm. The waffles are crunchy, but moist on the inside. The chicken is chewy. That's really good. I like that. Mm. It's really good. Okay, let's try the monkey bread. When it come out of the oven, I put the um, the cream cheese um, icing on top. I forgot to tell y'all I did that, but I did do that. And you're supposed to do that. So let's give this a taste. It's really good. It's sweet, you can taste the cinnamon, you can taste the icing. That's really good. I like that. It's really good. A little sweeter than I like, but that's just my preference. I'm not a big sweet person, but it's really good. Now, let's give our sausage gravy casserole a taste. This one I've been excited about. Get a piece of sausage. I kind of think this one's my favorite. I really do. This one's my favorite. The gravy, the creaminess, this little bit of spiciness of the sausage, the creaminess of the cheese, the eggs. Yeah, this one's my favorite. You taste the biscuit in there. Yeah, hands down, this one's my favorite. This one is my go-to. This will be the one that I make the most. They're all really good, don't get me wrong, but this one's my favorite. I would like to say thank you for joining me today. Thank you to all my subscribers. I love you guys, and I hope you enjoyed these recipes. I hope you enjoyed being with me today, 
and I would like to say Happy New Year to everybody. And I hope that y'all had a good Christmas and that you got everything that you wanted for Christmas. And I love you and I hope you join me next week to see what we'll be cooking. Bye.